Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming, and I want to welcome you to this week's new episode of Christ and Crafting. Today, we're going to be creating on something that I've never created on before. It's an artist palette, you know, like real artists, how they put their paint in different sections and they paint off of one of these. These are wood. Um, I ordered them on Amazon, and when I'm all finished, if anyone wants that information, I'd be glad to share it. So we're going to create a beautiful um, piece of art that says, I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139, verse 14. Uh, so it should be really good. As you are hopping on, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to sprinkle. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. And let's just jump right in. And let me put my camera up a little bit because I'm sinking. I don't know if it's gonna keep doing that or not. Okay, so we're gonna be using a bunch of different paint as our first step. And um, the first thing we're gonna do is sort of whitewash this artist palette. Which way do I want it to go? I want it to go this way. And um, I'm just using Waverly White Matte Finish No Prep Acrylic Paint from Walmart. Super affordable, inexpensive. Uh, so I'm going to put a little bit on, just a teeny bit on a paper palette. Um, this, I hope, will be a really good episode of Christ and Crafting because... I have some interesting things to talk to you about. We're going to talk about how God is the ultimate, divine, first artist and creator. And how he designed and created each one of us on purpose, uniquely with um, specific um, abilities. And that none of us are a cosmic mistake. Um, I just think it's going to be really good. If you ever have a tendency like I do to kind of look around and see other people and say, oh, you know, uh, this is where I say it. I say, God, why didn't you give me a beautiful singing voice? Because I love music. But he didn't give me a beautiful singing voice for a reason. He, did, he uniquely designed me not to have that. Um, and so I just need to give that up and start focusing on what God how he did design me. So if you ever have a tendency to look around and compare yourself or think that you're not worthy, this will be a good, um, a good Christ and crafting. Okay, so I just dipped my cruddy, 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 seriously cruddy paintbrush in some white acrylic paint and I'm just gonna kinda do this little, can you see that? And you can go, However you like. Do you like a heavy hand on this kind of thing? Then go for it. Do you like a lighter hand? Then that's fine too. So we're just going to get it covered. And of course I didn't get enough paint out. Um, please the turn the camera down some. I will. My um, issue here is that my, I need a new tripod. We might end up down too far. And if we are, I'm sorry about that. Um, my tripod is old and it needs to be replaced. Oh, and I didn't even turn on my light. Let me get that. And turn it on. I was so excited to come to you guys that I skipped a couple of my normal steps. Oopsie. Okay. That should make it a little bit easier to see. Okay. So I'm just going to keep dipping, and I'm very lightly, I think this is called dry brushing, dragging my brush across this wooden artist palette. Um, these were not super expensive. They did have an option to buy like 20 of them, and you got a discount on Amazon, uh, but I just opted to buy two because I didn't know if this would be something that I'd like or not. And I think I like it. Okay, I'm gonna say good. All right, and let me get my heat gun and let's dry it quickly so we can move on to the next step. Tell me in the comments if you have ever 
done a craft on one of these. Let me just give this a quick burst. Hey, what do you guys think about my t-shirt? Isn't it cute? We made this yesterday and the day before. It says, all you need is love and a dog. All right, that dries so quickly that I think we're good to go on to the next step. And so the next step is, you know how an, on an artist palette, I always struggle with how to hold it, that they'll have different colors of paint that they work from. Well, we're going to create that, and we're just going to use some of this craft paint. And I'm good, I'm not great at doing circles, <laughs> seriously, not great at all. So I'm going to use some of these little um, pouncer brushes. They come from Walmart in a set that looks like this, and I think it had four of this size, four of this size, and three of these little ones. These are great to have, and they're super affordable. So I'm just going to pour a little bit. You know, I'm going to take it out of the lid. And I'll come closer when it's time to actually put this on. So I'm just um, getting my little pouncer full of yellow paint and let's do the first one. And I do want my circles to be a little bit bigger than what this little brush is. So I'm just kind of twirling it. They don't have to be perfectly round, but I can't even get close to cutting or drawing a circle. So. I'm taking a little easy trick here. And I have already pre-done a lot of this project, so we'll be able to go all the way to completion. Okay, and when I was working on this part, what I noticed is that um, they kind of need to have two coats because if it's just one, some of the colors that I chose look a little bit transparent. And that's not a terrible thing, but. Okay, let's say good on that yellow. And I'm gonna throw my little pouncer in some water because I wanna be able to use that like 25 times. Okay, next up, let's do blue. And this blue is called pool. And of course, you guys, these colors, are, you can choose what you want. This is just what I chose, sort of a pastel look. Um, but you choose what you want. There's no specific way you have to do this. Okay, so I'm just getting. And also when I was practicing, for this this morning, I um, I did not measure in between these little blobs. I just eyeballed it, and that's what I recommend that you do. I'm having a hard time getting my paint to come out because this bottle is almost empty. <laughs> I would let this dry 100% and then come back a second time. And you could use these little pouncers a second time, or you could just use a brush because at that point you do have a circle. I can paint inside of a circle. I just can't draw a circle or cut a circle out. Or maybe the paint that you choose won't look quite as transparent as mine does. OK, 
Okay, let's choose orange next. And orange is pumpkin. These are all Waverly paints that are super affordable. This pumpkin color is the color that I've been using to do all of these carrot projects. It's great in the fall for pumpkins also, but it's a great orange. And I'm using a different little pouncer each time. Where did I get my shirt? This shirt came from Hobby Lobby this week. It has long sleeves. I will tell you that their shirts tend to run kind of small. I bought an extra large um, because I want to be able to wash and dry it. And um, after, after my ink that I used on these stencils was dry, I let it dry overnight, I heat set it with a hot iron on cotton for three or four minutes in each spot moving my iron around and it will totally be washable, dryable, wearable, everything. I'm not convinced that I have enough paint on here, but let's give it a try. What do you guys think about this idea already? What, um, okay, so what inspired me was there is a creator um, named Dina Hinkley Perry. And um, I had been starting to see these artist palette projects around, but she did a beautiful one. Come on, orange. There we go. She did a beautiful one and she used this stuff. Perhaps you were created for such a time as this, Esther 414. She just used the words. And then I was thinking about this, you are wonderfully and fearfully, you, no, sorry, you are fearfully and wonderfully made from Psalm 139, verse 14. And I was thinking about how God is a, the first artist, the first creator, and I was like, oh, artist palette, we have to do that. So it kind of all, God is so good. Um, I can start to kind of stress a little bit, I confess about what I'm going to say and do on Sundays on Christ and Crafting, because this is really why I am doing this Facebook page, is so that I can do Christ and Crafting and tell you about God's love and just share my experience. So I can kind of feel a little pressure each week. And God is so good. He just gave this all to me. And I was like, oh, it's so beautiful. I was telling my friend, it is just amazing to me how this always, always sort of comes together and it makes sense. So that is how this little project started. This is called Scallion and it's a really funky green. I love it. We're just making this look like an artist palette before we do our design on here. But I was kind of thinking, how cool would it be to do a heart in the center to represent God's heart for us, his love for us. But then I was like, I don't know, that might distract from the whole look of it being an artist palette. Um, maybe a small heart off to the side would be cute. I don't know. Let's do just a little bit bigger. And I'm just sort of, you can probably see, I'm just twirling my little pouncer thing and pushing the paint out further. Okay, let's say that's good. You really cannot go wrong in this project, seriously. Okay, and then I need pink. And this is called Ballet Slipper. I seriously need to get to Walmart and get some new paints. <laughs> Mine are all towards the end of the little container. But 
I, I want to use every single bit up before I buy nail. Okay, so here's my pink. And of course, you could do more than five little blobs of color. You could do whatever colors you want. If you want bright colors, um, it, it, this is like one of those projects where you can make it however appeals to you. Or you can make it just exactly like this. It's totally up to you. That looks like an oval. I'm afraid, I'm always afraid the more I mess with it, the more likely it is that I'm going to totally mess it up. Okay, so what I would do at this point is I would completely let it dry. And then I would take it outside and give it one coat of clear matte sealer spray because these ones are made of wood. And wood has a tendency to suck in your medium and then spread it out. So if you're using a stencil, it doesn't look very crisp. Um, so that's the spray kind of stops the wood's ability to suck the medium in and spread it out. So that is what I would do is I would, you have to do this outside. Just do one thin coat. You could also go over it with a, a little piece of sandpaper before you do that, if it feels really rough. Um, but these are pretty smooth. So I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna work on the one that I already did, which is this one. Here's God's palette. It's all different colors, different shapes, different sizes, different purposes, all that kind of thing. Hi, Sherry Nichols, how are you doing? And I see Joe Hopkins and Diana Hanline. Um, okay, so I already did this. It's already been sprayed, and my blobs have two coats of the color. They're a little easier to see that way. Okay, and I'm gonna use this stencil right here, which, look how terrible it looks. These are reusable many, 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 many times. And I did a fun project a few years ago where I did the whole stencil and then we put, we glued little bits of flowers on right here so it was kind of 3D. I don't know where that project is. Um, but anyways, they can get stained on the front but that does not affect how they work. And you can reuse these many, 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 many times. Okay, and mine, surprisingly enough, it's still pretty sticky. So, I'm just going to fuzz it real quick. This is called a tacky towel. You could fuzz. Just reduces the stickiness on a t-shirt like this, on a pair of jeans, on a, like a low lint tea towel. Don't do it on a terry cloth bathrobe or anything like that. Um, but that is called fuzzing. And it just, it just slightly reduces the stickiness of your project. Okay, now I have to play around with this for a second to remember how did I want it to go on. Because I want the words not to be falling into this hole. And I do kind of want it to be a little bit to the side. And my vision for this project, we're just gonna use the words, is that you could, you could frame this if you wanted. Or you could mount it to a board or a sign. Or you could set it in an easel. Or you could just put a little thing on the back of it to be able to hang it on the wall. There's lots of different things that you could do with it. Um, and I think this would be so sweet to make for a child's room. Just to remind them that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. And to be able to start a conversation and explain what that means and why that is important. Okay, so it's stuck on there. And we're just using some plain old black um, chalk paste. You 
don't want to use paint like this. No. Ever, 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 ever. I never do it uh, on stencils because paint dries very fast. And it doesn't matter what kind of paint it is. Chalk paint is not the same thing as chalk paste. Acrylic paint, latex paint, acrylic, uh, craft paint, milk paint, paint is paint is paint is paint. And when you use them on the stencils, paint dries really fast. And these have millions of teeny little holes in them. And those holes get clogged permanently. And then your stencil is done. And obviously, I like to use mine for a very long time. <laughs> very. So, um, yes, yeah, so I never... I never use any paint. I know some people do, but I want to use my stencils like 40 or 50 or more times, not, not five. I feel like they're an investment and I want to take good care of it. Okay, I'm not doing the lines, the circle around it, so I'm going to have to really concentrate because I have a tendency to forget what I'm doing, especially when I'm talking. I'm going to try to just get this on and not go over and over it. I'm going to get it on, and then I'm going to pull any gloves off. I'm going to hope I placed it somewhere good. I don't know. This is my first time doing this full project. I did sketch it out, and I have thought about it a lot and planned, but you know how that is. So far, I have not made a major boo-boo and gone outside of where I wanted to be. Okay, and it looks pretty good. So, let's do the peel and reveal and pray and hope. <laughs> oh my gosh, it looks so good. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh. This might be one of my favorite projects. Oh my goodness. I'll hold it up in just a second. I'm going to go throw this in a little tub of water over here. So it can soak until I can get into the kitchen to spray it off and then lay it on the counter to dry. And I'm also going to close up my chalk paste because I don't want this to dry out. Um, and if you leave them open, they dry out quicker. Okay. You guys look how beautiful that is. I might possibly have put it up a little bit higher, but the thing is this sentence is long. And I don't know if it would have made it past this. What do you guys think? Tana Walker says she absolutely loves it. I do too. And the thing with this project, you guys, is that um, it, it's just this. You can buy these at craft stores and or artist places that sell like good paint and stuff, or you can order it on Amazon. And um, the rest of it's super simple. And I think it's pretty special. So I'm really excited. Cindy says she loves it. Um, Kathy Col Collins says she loves it. Elizabeth Harley says she loves it. Heidi Scott says I love it too. Um, so you could do this kind of a project, you know, with it, all the paint that I showed you, and then you could choose a different stencil if this one doesn't speak to you. There's lots at magnoliadiy.com, but I am loving it. And um, this is the one that's still drying. You saw how easy that was. So, let me just clear off my desk just a teeny bit and pull my chair over, get my Bible and my notes out. And let me see if I want me to adjust my camera a little bit. I'm sorry if I'm making you seasick. So, this is always... Uh, you know, a learning experience for me. Okay. I think I'm good. I'm kind of out of the picture. Thank you so 
much for the stars. I did not see who did that, but I so appreciate it. I'm super excited how this turned out. Um, really, really excited. So what we're going to talk about is how God is the original divine artist. We're going to start at the beginning. We're going to start in Genesis. Then we're going to talk about, you know, after he created mankind, how he creates each one of us. I have a bunch of really awesome verses to share with you. I hope you'll stay through this part because this is the important part. This part is fun and meaningful, but what we do now is what's, you know, long lasting. So please stay. And if you have friends or family that you think would enjoy this, feel free to sprinkle or just tell them about how we do Christ and crafting here every Sunday. So that's what we're going to talk about. And um, let me just pray and then we'll jump right in. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Lord, thank you that you created us, that you are a loving God and a loving Father. You designed each one of us uniquely with our own gifts and talents and skills and things that we enjoy. Uh, you designed us with a purpose. You didn't crank us out on a giant conveyor belt, Lord, and I just praise you for that. So, Lord, I pray that um, as we go into your precious word that I will be able to express what you want me to say. Please guide my words, Lord. And um, I pray that the people listening and watching now and in the future will be blessed and encouraged by this concept and that they will look at themselves and others differently. I know I will. And I pray all this in your precious son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Okay, so God is the divine and original artist. And um, let's start at the beginning, which the beginning is Genesis. It's at the very beginning of the Bible. By the way, if you don't have a paperback Bible that is in translation that you can understand, you need to get one. Let me know in the comments if you want a link to an online store where you can order one. Um, I don't have any part of that or any say or benefit to that except I want you to have God's word in your hands. So let me know. if. If you would like that link. Okay, so we're starting at Genesis 1. We're going to do a good bit of reading, so stay with me. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Just imagine that. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that light was good, and he separated the light from darkness. God called light day and darkness night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. Um, this kind of makes me just feel weepy to think about how he, he created all of this. Um, okay, and God said, let there be an expanse. This is verse 6. Let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above it. And it was so. God called the expanse sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. Listen to how, how organized the creation was. It wasn't just a chaotic cosmic boom as some people would like to believe. It was not like that. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, <laughs> seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it according to the various kinds. So detailed, so specific, um, it just, it's amazing. And it was so, the land produced vegetation, plants bearing seeds, 
seed according to their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the third day. Okay, verse 14. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the expanse of the sky to give light to the earth, to govern the day and night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning on the fourth day. Okay, verse 20. And God said, let the water teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created the great tr creatures of the sea and every living and moving thing with which the water teems according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. Okay, we're getting there, so stay with me, please, um, because this is so good. And Okay, verse 24. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, livestock, creatures that move along the ground, and wild animals, each according to its kind. All very organized, very specific, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild, or wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Okay, here we go, verse 26. This is the important part. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along, along the ground. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves along the ground. And then skipping down to verse 31, it says, God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning the sixth day. So a couple things I wanted to just highlight in this is that um, in verse 26, it says that God made man in God's image. And when it says us and our, it's referring to the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, and in case you didn't know this, which I didn't know for a while, Jesus was present. In the beginning, he was. And he was the creative force that created everything. And in Jesus, everything that is, is maintained. It's just so amazing. And in verse 27, it says that God created mankind in his image, um, and it repeats that like three times, just to make sure that we got it. And then God said at the, um, that it was all very good, and that was the end of the sixth day. So, that was the very beginning. Now let's look at the book of Psalms. And we're going into um, this verse right here in just a minute. This has been really a fun um, Christ and crafting to prepare for. It's again, I mean, I always pray over this and, and think about it probably maybe too much. But it's amazing just how God, uh, it's not me, <laughs> it's God. He supplies, He provides, He paves the way, He put me here, He pushed me and prodded me a little bit into it, and that's, that's how it works. 
So we're going to look at Psalm 139, and we're going to read verses 1 to 18, because the whole psalm pertains pretty much to what we're going to be talking about. Okay, so it says, and this is David. I'll, okay, I'm still here. My son was calling, um, and he calls FaceTime, and it's impossible to hang up when somebody is calling you on FaceTime, so you pretty much have to let it ring. So... I apologize for that. But that was a good breather before we start this next section. Okay, so Psalm 139. The theme is God is all-seeing, all-knowing, all-powerful, and everywhere present. God knows us, God is with us, and his greatest gift is to allow us to know him. Okay, verse 1 says, O oh Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. And then he says, such knowledge is too wonderful me, for me, too lofty for me to attain. So this, is, this whole first part, verses 1 through 6, are talking about how God, God knows us. He's with us. He's familiar with us. We're not strangers. Okay, verse 7 says, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, or even there, and, okay, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. Do you guys remember just a few weeks ago, we did this craft, which was a project from the book of Isaiah. And it's talking about God's righteous right hand. Let me just read it to you real quick. And if you missed this video, um, let me know and I'll get you a link. Okay, it says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Okay. So I love that. That idea of God's righteous right hand. Okay, if I say, surely the darkness will hide me, we're in verse 11, and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. Okay, verse 13. This is where we're getting into our, how God created us. Why? Uh, okay, and I, I, I love this verse. I love the imagery of it. So verse 13 of Psalm 139 says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And here's our verse for today. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Um, so I have written in my little scribbles here, and we'll talk about this a little bit more. We are not an accident. God knit us together. He has a plan for us. Every person is equally special to God, so I need to reach out to the lost. And in my little notes down before, this is a life application study Bible, which I really recommend that you consider getting. Um, Get it in the translation that speaks to you. Mine is New International Version, NIV. Okay, so in the little notes down here, it says God's character goes into the creation of every person. When you feel worthless or even begin to hate yourself, remember that God's spirit is ready and willing to work within you. We should have as much respect for ourselves as our maker has for us. Okay, so let's continue on, and then we'll come back to this verse. Um, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. 
When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All of the days ordained for me were written in your book before the first one of them came to be. So that is, what did I'm supposed to go two more? How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God, how vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I wake, I am still with you. Um, so that is all telling us basically that he made us, that he knit us together in our mother's wombs, that uh, he could see us and know us before our first day. He knew the number of days in our lives before the first one came to be. Um, and let's jump to Ephesians 2.20, real, 2.10 real quick, and then we'll just talk a little bit. Okay, where are you, Ephesians? Ephesians is after Corinthians, Galatians, and then Ephesians. And this is written by Paul to the um, church in Ephesus. Okay. Two verses 10, and I'm sorry about the dogs. There's probably a leaf or a pine needle that has fallen off of a tree and it's blowing across our front yard, and they are very concerned. Um, okay, it says here, for we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And what I have written is that there is a plan it's not an accident. Um, so, so, I mean, the sum of most of that is that we are not the result of a cosmic accident, of things crashing into each other. That is not the truth. Uh, that is not how we came into existence. God spoke the world into existence, and on the sixth day, he created man in his image. And then we learn that we are, we, are God, we are fearfully and wonderfully made, that God knit us together in our mother's wombs. And that is so com comforting to me. So we're not a result of a cosmic accident. We are also not a result of evolution. So if you have ever been tempted to believe that, and I'm sorry if I'm stepping on some people's toes, but it's the truth. We are not the result of evolution. God created man and woman in his image. He did not create monkeys that over millions of years evolved into human beings. That is just not the truth. Um, and the other thing is we were not cranked out on a heavenly conveyor belt, you know, boom, 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 boom. He specifically designed each one of us. We are each one of us unique. Each one of us are special. And each one of us are loved. And God so loved the world that he gave us one and only son that whosoever shall believe in him will have, will uh, not perish, will have eternal life. And he did that. Uh, for each one of us individually. So, all that to say, if there was no one else and it was just for me, God would have still done that because he loves us each uniquely and separately. And I hope that's making sense. If it is, do some of these. Those are hearts. Um, so he knew us before. He knit us together. He created us with a purpose, even if we don't always feel that way. So let's go back, just real quick, I'm just going to read it from right here, to Psalm 139, and then we'll talk a little bit more about what it means to be fearfully and wonderfully made. And then I'll wrap it up. I know this has been kind of long, but um, God is so good. Okay, so in, in Psalm 139, 14, it says, I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So what is fearfully? Um, fearfully is not being afraid. Fear is more a sense of awe. 
of just how amazing it is. How amazing our Heavenly Father is. We're, we don't have a reason to fear Him. We have a reason to be in awe um, of Him. And He created us not to be fearful, um, so that is not what that word means at all. It means that we should just be in awe of how, and awe as an A-W-E, of how he created us. And wonderfully, um, that really is saying that we are, we are uniquely crafted. He crafted each one of us. Um, so how can we live with that truth? And I'll wrap up. This is what I was thinking about. You know, so what? What if you believe all that stuff? What does that mean? How does that, how could that impact my life, your life? Well, the first thing that occurs to me is that we all need to stop comparing ourselves to others. I don't know if you do that, but I sure do. No matter how great things are, there's always somebody who has something greater. No matter how great or wonderful something is that happens to me, or, you know, my life in general, there's always someone with something greater. Um, and the thing is, it's, it's easier to stop comparing ourselves to others if we can remember, ah, okay, God made her with a beautiful singing voice. And I praise you, Lord, that you made this person with a wonderful, beautiful singing voice. He did not choose that quality or skill or ability for me. And so I need to stop being envious or jealous or however you want to put it, or wishing that things were different because they're not different. They are the way they are. Um, they are how God designed them to be, how he he specifically crafted each one of us to be. So don't compare yourself to how other people look or how smart other people are. Or as you get older, um, you can start to kind of wish you were younger or compare yourself to somebody who's 10 or 20 years younger than you. Don't. <laughs> um, we were each created uke, uh, unique designed with love and care. And um, I want to quote this lady that, um, that I knew a long time ago when I was um, a consultant with Southern Living at Home. She, went, she designed all this beautiful pottery, and her name was Gail Pittman. She's still living. Anyways, she would always say that God doesn't make any junk. And that is the, the honest truth. He does not make junk. Um... So, we are who we are because God chose that for us. He designed us that way. And if we can take our eyes off of other people and look up and praise God for how he created us to be and step into those talents and abilities that we have, that God gifted us, um, you know, keep our interests in the things that God created us to be interested in, then life is so much better. Um, so the last two things are how can you live with this whole idea of how God created the world, he created man in his image, he um, created us fearfully and wonderfully made. How can you live in that? Well, one thing that really stands out to me is we need to remember that when we are interacting with other people, especially with people that we disagree with, that are different for us, that have different views, different philosophies, different lifestyles that are just different, or that we feel like we don't like, or that we are superior to them. I don't know. Do you guys ever feel that way about people? Um, we need to remember that as uniquely and specially handcrafted as I am, they are too. And then the very last thing um, is that we need to remember that for ourselves. We need to treat ourselves with that same care and compassion 
uh, that same understanding that each one of us is how we are and not to be down on ourselves all the time or wishing that things were different. So that is what I really wanted to say to you today. And um, I hope you liked our project. I really did. If you make this, I would love to see a picture for sure. Um, so I'm going to pray us out, but let me just say a couple things. If you haven't already liked and followed DIY Dreaming, I would love for you to do that. Turn on your notifications. Um, do it this or a this or say something into the comments. So I'll, I'll make it slightly more likely that Facebook will serve you what I have coming up. And I have some great stuff coming up as well as Christ and Crafting every Sunday. So I'd love to have you come for that. So do that. Feel free to sprinkle if you have people in your life that you feel like could, would be encouraged by what I just talked about. Um, what else? Oh, if you want the information about this, or the names of these paint colors, or a link to look at this stencil or chalk paste or anything else, just tell me in the comments and I'll be glad to get that for you. Okay, Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Oh my gosh. Your word is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. And Lord, thank you that we have access to your word. And through your word, you can speak to us and we can draw closer to you. So I thank you so much for the word, for your precious word. I thank you so much for your precious son that while we were yet sinners, he died for us so that we can be in an intimate relationship with you. We can, he paid for the sin, our sins, that we could do nothing about because he loves us and he created us and everything else in that same spirit of love. So I just thank you so much, Lord. Um, I do know that there are a lot of people out there that are going through very hard things, that have things that are hurtful or difficult happening around them. Maybe it's with their, their health or a loved one or, you know, there's a million different things that it could be. Um, and while I don't know those things, Lord, you do. And so I just pray this week that you will let these people that you love, that you created each one of them, you knit them together in their mother's womb, that you will let them feel, a, feel your presence and your love and your care, and that you're holding them in your hands, that you have a good plan for them, Lord. It's not you who strays away from us or wanders. It's us. We, If we know you, we just get distracted. We just, I don't know. That's just the human condition. And, and so I just pray that you will help those people to sense you, to feel you, to know that you love and care for them this week, that you have a good plan for them. And so I lift all of that up to you. And uh, I just praise you, Lord. And I pray all this in your precious son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So thank you so much for joining me. I... Um, I really enjoy this time that we get to spend together on Sundays. If you're watching this on replay any other day of the week, I appreciate it just the same. Where did I get my shirt? It came from Hobby Lobby and I made it. Here on DIY Dreaming, if you look back a few days on the videos, look at the cute little elbows. I'm gonna jump off message for just a minute. Um, anyways. Jennifer says, thank you, Heidi. Uh, Jackie's asking, what time on Sunday? Well, typically, it kind of depends on what I have going on with my family, but typically I try to come live between 1 and 3.30 on Sundays. And <clears throat> I cannot always do a new Christ and Crafting every week. So on the Sundays that I have, I'm out of town or something is happening, I will pray and look back into my whole library of past Christ and craftings and figure out which one 
from the last, I don't know how long I've been doing this, three years, would, would be good for that day. And I will replay that. So, um, how can you follow me? There should be a like and follow button at the top of your page. Um, or you can click on DIY Dreaming or put it in the search bar at Facebook and then click on the like and follow and click on the notifications button. If you're watching on YouTube, hello. I appreciate all of you too. I hope this was a blessing to you as well. And um, I would love it if you would like this post, this YouTube video, and um, subscribe to my YouTube channel and tell your friends and family about it too. So. I hope everyone has a very blessed and wonderful rest of your day. I hope to see you this upcoming week. We're going to be doing lots of crafts. The crafts that I do here on DIY Dreaming are, they're going to be quick and easy. I mean, this was not hard, was it? They're going to be quick and easy. Um, they're going to be sometimes a little different because I like to do things that are kind of unique, like making those carrots and butterflies. And um, They're going to be affordable. And the most important thing, though, is that they're always going to be um, related to either faith, that's the most important thing, family, or flowers. <laughs> because I love flowers. So, um, so I'd love to have you come back hope that this was a blessing to you today. There is somebody in the comments, Lynn, my sweet friend, who's explaining how to like and follow this page. So look for her comment. Um, anyways, I hope that this was what you needed to hear today and that you know how truly unique and special and loved you are by your Heavenly Father. Alrighty, see you later.